Welcome back. Three years ago, Houston Democrat Mike Collier drew 3.8 million Texas votes and came within five points of unseating Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. The former Price Waterhouse partner, Biden campaign advisor, and occasional Watch Your Point panelist is convinced a foundation has been laid to do much better in 2022. We talked one on one about why he's seeking a rematch. So I have a skill in the private sector. It's solving complicated problems. I'm a financial watchdog. Uh, I would love to serve that up for the public good. We've got lots of problems that needed to be solved. That need to be solved. Work hard. Be honest. Don't stay too long. You're a workhorse. He's a show horse. Is that what you're saying? We saw what happened with COVID. We see what happened with the grid. The legislature was warned by ERCOT. They said to them, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. They didn't solve that problem. So ERCOT went to the legislature in 2017 because we had a cold snap in 2016. And, and the legislature had been warned many times leading up to 2016 that we would not be able to handle a cold snap. ERCOT looked at the technical implications of getting through the 16 cold snap and came and said to the legislature in 2017, we won't get through a cold snap. And the legislature did absolutely nothing. To blame ERCOT makes no sense. To blame the legislature is the right, that's where the blame lies. Texas is one of 12 states which has refused to expand Medicaid. Uh, is Dan Patrick in part responsible for that? Uh, up to this point, he has been responsible uh, and has shared responsibility for not expanding Medicaid, but he shares it with Greg Abbott and uh, Rick Perry was the first to say uh, falsely that it's a bad deal for Texas. Um, the business community has always supported expansion of Medicaid because a healthy workforce is a productive workforce. Morally, it's the right thing to do. Financially, it is a good deal. That's why most states have done it. And they're laughing at us because, you know, we're the ones that are getting a raw deal. They're getting a good deal. I knew Bob Bullock. He was the last Democratic Lieutenant Governor of Texas. Uh, his legacy was being able to work with Republicans. Uh, do you think you'll be able to work with Republicans? Well, I think I have to. I mean, I think I have to. That's what Texans expect. I mean, I, uh, I run around the state and I talk to a lot of people and uh, people are really sick. They're heart sick over all the fighting, the vitriol, people not working together. They don't want a partisan warrior, the lieutenant governor. Now, they want me to stand up for what I believe in and we'll make sure that we do right. But I, I would say this, Greg, um, I perceive Dan Patrick to be uh, the heart of the problem. I, I, I think when you take him out of the equation, just take him out of the equation, get him into retirement. Then you'll see a change. Then I think senators will be more uh, uh, accommodating of one another's point of view. I think that the governor would behave differently with Dan Patrick out of the way. Dan Patrick is a hyper-partisan warrior. It has been bad for our state. It's been bad for our policy. He's pit Texan against Texan. We see that in the way the legislature operates. We see that in policy. And he's got to go.